Hey everyone, let's talk about the only fully carbon-faced edgeless paddle on the market to date. Let's talk about the 6.0 Infinity. Thank you to 6.0 for sending us this paddle to review and thank you for those of you that are using our code that helps us keep the lights on, helps us keep bringing you these reviews so you can make the best choices on your purchases. Now I've played several edgeless paddles and I gotta say that this is better performing than all of them. The SLK Halo Omega Max, the uh, Selkirk Power Air, the Diadem Icon V1 and V2. This paddle here is the best performing edgeless paddle that I've played to date. See here, very first game, I'm painting the baseline, able to really give it everything I got, and it's, um, you know, it's biting, it's it's spinning into the, the court, and it really is um, landing in. But why play the edgeless paddles? Let's talk about the specs on this. So this comes in at 16.3, inches long it's got a width of 7.5 and 7.7 .7 inches that's because it tapers slightly just like the original double black diamond then it also has a five and a half inch handle with a 4.25 inch circumference handle so good enough for the tui just like the original and this paddle is a 16 millimeter paddle now as far as spin goes, independent testers, this has a little bit less spin than the Double Black Diamond. This is coming in around 1999, 1900, high 1900s, whereas the Double Black Diamond is like 2018. So very slight difference as far as the spin goes. So this is the least powerful paddle in the 6.0 line. So uh, this is where um, I was able to start dialing it in pretty quickly. It's just my drop shots from No Man's Land, third shot drops. I was able to start dialing it in pretty quickly. As, even as this first game here, I missed some, but then was able to really um, dial it in fairly quickly. Uh, because it has the same spin as the double black with a little bit less power, it was easier to start, you know, touching these shots in and, and dialing it into getting myself up to the kitchen and being able to play really good defense with it. You can see from some of these shots, just really even um, just getting the paddle on it now. And if you look at the microscopic picture here on the carbon face material, the carbon ply, it is a tighter pattern than the original Double Black Diamond. So we can see that they're, they're playing with the different variances and angles and, and, and spacing of the weave on these carbon plies that they're making these paddles from. But just like the other ones, this is thermoformed, unibody, and what they've done to widen the sweet spot on this, because typically with a edgeless paddle, the sweet spot's a little bit smaller. What they've done on this is they've really reinforced the edges all the way out here to make it where it's not that big a difference. So we're talking about 1A, 1B as we're comparing double black, which is one of the best paddles that have come out this year. That's my paddle for 2023. The double black diamond was the best paddle that I think came out in 2023. But this is the edgeless version of that. So there's a couple things you lose when you do that. So one, the twist weight is lower. So the twist weight on the double black diamond is around 6.59. The twist weight on this is around 5.9. So what twist weight means, it's also torsion stability. It means that when the ball hits on the outside of the paddle, it's how likely the paddle is to twist in your hands. And so this paddle here is a little bit lower twist weight. Therefore, the sweet spot will be smaller just because of the twist weight. Because when you hit out here, it's going to move a little bit more in your hands. But the difference is when you hit out here, you can hit all the way out here to the edge and the paddle, the ball will still go straight. You might, you will lose power, right? As you hit on the edge on all these paddles, you will lose power when you hit out towards the edge. But because there's no edge guard here, you can hit all the way out here. So it gives you actually more surface material when you're playing defense or when you're hitting the ball. The sweet spot feels a little bit smaller. So you get feedback on the edges of the paddle, way out on the edges of the paddle. You get feedback that, that um, vibrates your hands a little bit. So you know you're hitting outside of the sweet spot. But the difference is there's no edge guard. So you can hit all the way out to the outside of the paddle. And they're very frequently on these paddles. I actually hit all the way out to the edge of the paddle and still got the ball over rather than having it shank or go to the side. I'm able to see uh, the ball go where I'm aiming it. And at the kitchen line, it didn't hurt us, hurt me too bad. So the one thing, that's the one benefit you get from hitting with an edgeless paddle is that you really have a whole surface face that you can hit and defend and use the paddle 
completely to play pickleball. Because it is able to um, hit the ball straight, it just doesn't go as far and it vibrates your hands a little bit. So it, you definitely know when you're missing the sweet spot on these edgeless paddles. But I really felt comfortable here in the kitchen. That's where my game is at. I'm not a power player. Uh, I really am a, a touch and control player. So I found that once I got things into the kitchen, this paddle performed along with a lot of them that I'm used to playing with. And I really enjoyed playing it in the kitchen in the dink battles and was able to uh, really um, control the points. Now, I try to just hit the sweet spot. I know everybody just tries to hit the sweet spot, but I find myself appreciating this. I had several defensive uh, putbacks and defensive pops that I got my hand on it, and I hit the ball way out here and got it back to the other person on the other side of the net. One right there, it hit it out of the edge of the paddle. It still went straight, but it kind of dies out there. So might need a little bit of lead tape for those that really like edgeless paddles. You just add a little, ed little, little bit of edge lead tape to the edge. Really had an easy time doing that because of the, the face of this paddle. Now let's talk about the performance of this paddle compared to the double black diamond. This has less power, okay? It is a less powerful paddle. You can see from these serves and the serve returns that uh, I'm able to paint the back of the baseline. So this power paddle is a little bit less powerful. It has a lower swing weight. The swing weight on this is around 110. The swing weight on the uh, double black diamond is around 114. The ruby is 117. And the black diamond is around 116. So this has the lowest swing weight out of the models that they've offered other than the sapphire. And this one here is a control paddle. So if you want to take the double black diamond, which is a, I would say more of an all round paddle, like that's an all court paddle. It is not defensive, not offensive. You can use it for both. It doesn't lean one way or the other, it has significant power, but not overpowered. It has good control, but not a soft control paddle. So this is more of the control version. So if you want to compare, okay, I have the double black diamond or the, the infinity, uh, if, you, if you're a control player, if you're a power player and you do not need help from the paddle to generate power, this is going to be a paddle that you will enjoy. So let's take a look at the hard shots with this paddle. This would be the, um, the putaways, drives, um, anything that has to do with pop. Now this paddle has a little bit more pop than the black diamond um, by all the measurements by John Q and some of the other guys that are doing the measurements. And I found that, you know, uh, Hands battles, if I was trying to put the ball away with overheads, I still had plenty of zip and, and ability to put the ball away. Um, because it is more controllable than the double black diamond, which is a very controllable paddle, but this is takes it up a notch. This paddle is actually third in power. It would be the black diamond, then the infinity black diamond, then this paddle when it comes to the pop by all the metrics. And I found that I really enjoyed this at the kitchen and being able to end points with it. I still had no problem with that part of this game. As we talk about the different games here, this would be more leaning towards the control. So dink battles, soft shots in the kitchen, soft third shot drops, resets from no man's land. This paddle excels in that area. Now here's where I think that this paddle is one of the better paddles in the 6-0 line is the kitchen game, the dink battles. So, um, you know, this is my first few dink battles with this. And this paddle, uh, the one I have, has a little bit thicker handle as a 4.5. So you can see I'm kind of popping up these first few dink battles because I'm trying to get used to the hand position on here. It is phenomenal at resets. It's phenomenal at third shot drops. I just felt like it was an extension of my hand. I could just pick the ball up and throw it wherever I wanted there. So they really felt the difference there and really felt like I could hit any shot I wanted with this paddle and have it go where I was aiming, which, you know, obviously that's what we all hope we can do. But when you have a control paddle that does it for you, it really makes it a lot easier to play. As you can see these shots, I'm able to really put it where I want to put it and get myself up to the kitchen and get the games going in the kitchen. Now, the only knock I can say on this is because it's edgeless, you're going to want to do some edge tape on it. Now, I have white uh, electrical tape. I put white electrical tape on all my paddles, but I just have a, a layer of white electrical tape I got from Ace 
and uh, or any you know hardware store, you can get white electrical tape, and you, it doesn't make it look any different because this paddle is white and black, really sharp looking paddle, and it, it just looks good there. So you can just put some edge tape on it, so when you scuff it up, you can take the tape off and put another piece of tape on it, and, and it, will, it will just keep the paddle protected because you are gonna get some scrapes, right? You go and dig in a ball off the ground, you're gonna scrape it, and it's gonna scrape up and chip the paint. It's gonna happen, it happens on every edgeless paddle that I've ever played. On the ones that I mentioned earlier, the SLK Halo, I mean the SLK Omega, the, the Power Air, uh, the Icon, all of them I dinged up the edges on it. Well, the Icon actually has a strip around it to protect that, but on the edgeless paddles, you're gonna ding them up if you're hitting the ground. The other thing I appreciate about 6.0 is that they spent a year on this paddle. I've been talking to him about this and hitting prototypes, and I just appreciate the fact that he keeps doing something different. He's pushing the technology. He's not just going to China and buying paddles. He is doing what he can to put energy into his paddles to make it something unique on the market that everybody likes. And I appreciate Dale. I appreciate what he's doing and I appreciate the quality of his materials. These are, I would say 6.0 is my paddle company of the year. They've come out with three three models now that are, are phenomenal paddles and they fit kind of different uh, markets in the way that they're they're, they're designed and they're not, they're unique with the same paddle shape, but they're unique to each other, which I just appreciate the fact that he's just not doing, okay, well, let's just make a different shape of the same thing. He's making the same shape, but then he's putting different materials inside of it, different technology inside of it to make it play differently. And I will say with the tighter carbon weave pattern on here, it feels smoother. It felt smoother to me right off the get-go, but I did not see, like, it, we're talking minimal difference in spin compared to the original double leg diamond. So overall, I think this paddle is fun to play with. I enjoy grabbing it out of my bag. It's become one of my paddles in my regular rotation, and I just enjoy playing with it. So good job, 6-0, I really appreciate this. Now this paddle retails for 220 bucks, so it is uh, gonna be $40 more expensive than the double black diamond. Double black diamond was 180. With our pirate discount code, that was 160. With the this one, with the pirate discount code, it would be $198. So all the things we talked about, is it worth the $40 extra? I think it's worth it for those that like edgeless paddles and like the clean design of this paddle. But if you don't like this brand, you wanna check out another brand, or you wanna see my other 6-0 reviews, look here. Yeah. Right there.